All right, so here is my first drawer of blushes. Um, I guess I'll start over here with my Tom Ford blushes. So these are all of his cheek colors. So this first one is Inhibition. This one could be one of my favorites. Well, I'll be saying that an awful lot. <laughs> this is Inhibition. And I'm not gonna be swatching any of these blushes. They just don't, they don't show up that well anyway. So here is Love Lust. Here is Frantic Pink. Here is Ravish. Here is Wicked. And here is Gratuitous. And then here are all of the Sheer Cheek duos. This one is Paradise Lust. These are all of the baked gelée formulas. All of these cheek colors are like uh, regular pressed powders. Here is By Coastal. I think this is the first one that ever came out. Here is Exotic Flora. And here is Lisome. And then I have this Sicily Orchid number three coral shade. This is such a gorgeous blush, it's so beautiful. It has like this beautiful sheen and this design is not an overspray. It's like all the way through, although I think there was an overspray initially, but like the whole design is not. It's really, really beautiful. And then I have two um, Gucci blushes from their original line, which has since been discontinued. I love these blushes, love, love, love these blushes. I really wish they didn't discontinue their entire line, but this is Nude Freesia. And this one is Spicy Petal. I love this one. It's such a beautiful nude shade. And then I've got two Edward Bess. Um, they're, they're powders, but I like to use them as uh, blushes. So this is Threads of Silk in Chow. And here's a highlighting powder in Marbleized Rose Gold. This like ends up being a little bit too pigmented for a highlight for me, so a little bit too like deep as a highlight. It's actually hard to tell. It looks bright enough, but once I get it on the cheeks, I don't know, it just looks really obvious. That is the Edward Best Marbleized Rose Gold. And then I have a couple Hourglass blushes. This one is Diffused Heat. Such a pretty summertime blush. I need to take this one out, actually. And this one is Mood Exposure. This is one of the first Hourglass products I ever purchased. And then I have this Burberry blush in number seven, Earthy Blush, Light Glow. And this blush, it has like a really like great nude, neutral kind of appearance, but on my cheeks, it warms up a little bit. So it ends up being kind of on the peachy side. I really wish it kind of stayed true to what I see in the pan. It's what I was looking for, but it doesn't, unfortunately. Then I've got a couple from Kogendo. This one is the Mineral Cheek Palette in number one pink. So it has a lighter and a darker pink. These powders are so soft and silky. And then this one is in Coral. Same idea, a lighter and a darker coral color. And then this is the NARS 413 Bleaker, which is their uh, makeup store's address in New York City. And this was limited edition, but I love these two shades. Like this like bubblegum pink is so, so pretty. And then you can like mix it in with this really light mauve color. Just really cool. It's a very nice like cool toned duo. And then up here I have all of my Chanel blushes. I did a whole video on my Chanel blushes and I don't think I've acquired any more since then. Oh no, that's a lie. I think maybe, <laughs> I think maybe I have. Anyway, this one is Jersey. This one is 330 Rose Petalant, I think. Let me get these out of the way. A friend of mine that works at Nordstrom sent me some like display sample. So this is Focha Rosa. And here is number 71, Malice. Here is Rose Initial, really beautiful pink. Here is Rose Ekrin, which is a little bit more neutral. Here's number 55, In Love. Here is Fleur de Lotus. Here is 390, Burnt Coral. Here is Tweed Pink, Tweed Cherry Blossom, Tweed Beige, which is one of my all-time favorite Chanel blushes. I wish it was not limited edition. Here is Jardin de Chanel. Here's another Tweed one. This is Tweed Coraline. Number 320, Rouge Profonde. 
Here is number two, Rose Bronze. Here's number 82, Reflex. And here is Golden Sun. Probably my favorite Chanel blush, which unfortunately has been discontinued. And then I have this Le Beige Duo number two. I think you saw its counterpart when I did my bronzers. It had like a light and a deep bronze like duo. This is another limited edition. This was part of their Kyoto collection. What is this actually called? The Lumieres de Kyoto. All right, those are all my Chanel blushes. Here are some Charlotte Tilbury. I have First Love. Here is Ecstasy. And here is Pillow Talk. And then I have some of these Marc Jacobs um, Air Blushes. These were so great. I don't know why they discontinued these. This is Kink and Kisses. This is Lines and Last Night. And here is Flesh and Fantasy. I think people always talked about how Flesh and Fantasy was a Pillow Talk dupe. The colors are definitely very, very close, but I like the sheen of Pillow Talk a little bit more. It's a little bit more satiny. All right, this drawer has actually recently been cleaned. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why, like a couple weeks ago, I decided to um, clean this particular drawer. So I'm just gonna wipe it down just to make sure it's dust free. And then I'm gonna put the blushes all back in here. That's it for this drawer. Let's move on to the next blush drawer. All right, here is my second drawer of blushes. It is not nearly as organized as the other one. I don't have as many dividers. Well, I don't have actually any dividers in this particular drawer. I don't know. I don't know why. I think I have some extras laying around, so maybe I'll put those in once we take all these out and I can try and like figure out how to better organize this drawer, but it is kind of a mess. So I'm just gonna grab as I go. I don't know why this is so dirty. I'm gonna have to clean that off. Uh, but this is the M Cosmetics Heaven's Glow Magic Hour Blush. This is the first one they came out with and it has like this beautiful peachy tone. It's a baked blush. It's really gorgeous on the skin. Here is the Faded Clementine from M Cosmetics. I haven't used this one on camera for you guys, but as you can tell, I've used it quite a bit and it is quite lovely. Actually, let me just hold it up next to the Magic Hour so you can see the difference. The Faded Clementine is just a little bit more um, neutral, I guess you could say. And then I have two of the Persona blushes, Georgia and Carmel. Here is Georgia and here is Carmel. And then I have the Ofra Samantha March uh, collab blush duo in Chiclet. This is such a gorgeous blush and it has a shimmer and like a more matte side. And then here is a newer Dior blush. This is Peach Volley. And here is Pink Pong. And then I've got two of those Jill Stewart blushes that I think are still out of stock, but Hopefully they'll get in stock soon, but these are the Bloom Mix Blushes, and this is in shade 07 Lavender Rhapsody. And here is Blooming Tulip, which is shade number one. And then, of course, I have a bunch of these Laura Mercier Blush Color Infusion Blushes. So here is Strawberry, and this blush formula is one of my favorites. Here is Fresco which is probably my favorite shade. Here is Grapefruit, which I love. I mentioned this in my Sephora VIB recommendations video. Here is Peach. Here is Sangria. And here is Ginger. Then I have this really random Natasha Denona Blush and Glow. Is there a shade name to this? I don't see a shade name, but this is the one that's like a little duo. This is actually great for travel. And then I've got a bunch of NARS blushes. This one is Tempted, which is one of the newer shades that I absolutely love and love wearing this as an eyeshadow as well. Here is Thrill, which is one of the newer shades as well. Really pretty cool tone pink. Here is Impassioned, 
another really cool toned pinky mauve color really beautiful and then here is NARS Madly which is probably one of my all-time favorite blush shades and then I have two from the Erdem collab this one is loves me not and then loves me is this really beautiful like watermelon color and then I've got this Melt Blush Light Nevermore blush. This is really pretty. It has like such a beautiful satin sheen. Then I've got this MAC Extra Dimension blush in Fairly Precious. And then I have this RMS Pressed blush in Lost Angel. I haven't actually used this too much. I hauled this a few months back and it's really pretty. It has, I don't know if you guys can see, it has like a little bit of like a gold shift in there. I have to use this because this would be perfect for this season. Then I have this By Terry blush in number five, Sexy Pink. <laughs> I don't know why that always makes me giggle. But this is a really, really beautiful, bright, bright pink. And then I have some Chantecai shades. This one is in Emotion. This is the one that has the B on top. And I've, <laughs> I've been really careful. I don't know if you guys can see, but like the wings are kind of like worn off because this is just an overspray so I've been taking my brush and just using like <laughs> the blush on the sides here because I don't want the bee to go away but I'm just gonna have to suck it up and and use this blush properly but that is emotion this one is grace it had a sea turtle on there I don't know if you guys can see that and then this one is joy and has a wild horse embossed on there and then next I have this Givenchy Prism Blush in Spice. Really gorgeous. I remember using this just a couple of times and really loving it. I have to take this one out too. And then I have some of these um, Kosas Color and Light Press. This is in the color Contra Chroma and then it's one of their high intensity ones. So they have a bunch of colors like Contra Chroma and then the high intensity ones are for a deeper skin tone. So look how beautiful that is. So it's a blush and a highlight. And then here is Contra Chroma, the non high intensity. So this is a little bit more suitable for my skin tone. And then here is Longitude Zero, which is gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. This is some of my favorite products from Kosas. And then I've got two duo glows from Natasha Denona. This is in Rayo, beautiful glowy blush. And then this one is in Alba, which is a little bit more peachy. And then I have two of these limited edition um, MAC collabs with Robert Lee Morris. And this is a powder blush in the shade Linda. Such a gorgeous blush. I mean, this packaging is like, it's so extra and really hard, <laughs> really hard to store. But I just absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. It's a shame that these were limited edition. And then this one is in Rhubarb. Such a gorgeous color. And then I have some Becca blushes. This is in Tiger Lily, really bright orange. I have Blushed Copper, which is definitely a little too deep for my skin tone, but I just love this color, this shade. And then I have Snapdragon, another bright color. These Becca blushes are so, so pigmented. And then I have two Hourglass Ambient Strobe Lighting Blush Palettes. This is, let's see, Incandescent Electra Brilliant Nude and Euphoric Fusion. I love this palette, that Brilliant Nude shade. Oh, it's so good. And then here is another one. Uh, this is just a lighting blush palette. This one I think was part of one of those Nordstrom anniversary sales. And then I have two blush palettes from Viseart. This one is Plum Bronze gorgeous. You know what I'm going to say. I love these <laughs> so much. And then this one is Rose Coral. And if I ever want like a really, really bright, bright, like Technicolor blush, I always think of this palette. And then last but not least in this drawer, I have this old Urban Decay Basquiat collab, like cheek palette. And I actually really, really love the highlight in here. And I love this bronzer and this blush. These three products I used quite a bit in this palette. 
and it's probably a little bit too old to be using, but I just, I love Basquiat and I just really love this packaging. So anyway, I've held on to it. All right, so um, I have, let's see, I have one like really long divider here. So I think I'm gonna put that in here and hopefully all the blushes will, I don't know, line up a little bit better. So let me do that and I'll put everything back in here. All right, so not not perfect. I don't like that these Beccas are just kind of <laughs> sitting on top of these hourglass palettes, but this will have to do for now. All right, so this is one of my highlighter drawers. Oh boy, this is gonna be a long video. <laughs> so I have three, yeah, I have three highlighter drawers. So this is the first of three. As you can tell, I've run out of room, things are doubling up or whatever. So anyway, we're just gonna deal with it. So I'm gonna talk about the things that are sitting on top first. I have this Anastasia Beverly Hills uh, loose highlighter. This is in Peach Fizz. It is so beautiful as like a blush topper. Really, really gorgeous. And then I have the Vegas colorway, which is just a gorgeous, like straight up highlighter. And then I have this loose RMS uh, Living Glow Face and Body Powder. And I don't think there's a shade name. Nope, that's it. And I remember thinking this was so much blingier than I was expecting. It's almost like a highlighty bronzer. Oh my God, it's gorgeous. And I have to stop swatching all these because this is gonna take way too long. I have the Chanel La Gel Paillette. This came out, I think, with last fall. And it's just this pretty kind of like gel product you can kind of put all over your face or body. It's limited edition, so I don't even think this is available anymore. And it just gives you this like light sparkle. It's not quite as um, crazy looking as it looks in the jar. Like once you kind of spread it all over, it actually looks really nice. I've got the Dior, what are these called? The Nude Air Luminizers in shade 001. I have the Tom Ford Radiant Perfecting Powder in 01 Gilt Glow. I love, love this highlighter. I wish these weren't limited edition. And here it is in Luna. Those two came out at the same time. Absolutely stunning. And then I have the Sheer Highlighting Duo in Reflex Gilt. Gorgeous, gorgeous baked gel -A products. And then I have these uh, limited edition Tom Ford uh, powders. This is the Night Bloom powder in Black Bloom. And here it is in Velvet Bloom. And this is in Soleil Bloom. This was the best one out of the three. The other two were a little bit, like a little hard pressed. They were hard to pick up and not that effective, but this one's really pretty. Then I have the Milk Makeup Flex Highlighter in Lit. This one is okay. I don't remember my feelings on this one. Yeah, that one's really pretty. I need to use this more. Here is the MAC Postmodernist Peach. It's an extra dimension skin finish. This one is beautiful. And then I have some of the ambient lighting powders. This is Diffused Light. This one is in Luminous Light. This one I think is my favorite. And this one is in Radiant Light. This is a really nice, very, very light, sheeny bronzer on my skin tone. Really beautiful. And you can tell by the old, <laughs> the old uh, logo here that this is an old powder. And then I have the Ofra. This is the Samantha March um, collab also. This is the March Beauty Word. And then I have um, the Chantikai Year of the Dog face highlighter. I kept the box because I just thought it was so cute. I don't usually hold on to boxes, but I will say I was not impressed with this highlighter at all. It's just very powdery, not a lot of sheen. Any kind of like metallic sparkle you see is just an overspray. It was okay. Nothing special. And then I have the Burberry Fresh Glow Highlighter in Rose Gold. I love these highlighters. They are 
so, so beautiful. They're big chalet. They're just absolutely stunning. And then we have the Chantecaille Moonlit Pearl Glow Powder. Beautiful. It's like this kind of soft gel powder, almost like a cream. Just really, really stunning. Just gorgeous texture. Absolutely love it. And for something so creamy, I thought for sure I was going to get like hard pan, but nope. It has stayed pretty pristine. Again, limited edition. I don't think you can get this anymore, unfortunately. Then we have the new Clinique Flower Pop Highlighter. One of my new favorites. Absolutely love it, big gelée. And then we have the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Star Highlighter. I love this highlighter. Another kind of like big gelée product, really gorgeous. When I got this, I thought it was going to be too dark on my skin tone, but it actually is so reflective that it works on my pale skin, surprisingly. The Bobbi Brown Luxe Illuminating Powder in Golden Hour. This was limited edition and I loved it. I love this. It's another one of those soft powders. It kind of reminds me of that Chantecaille Pearl Moonlit Powder. It has that same kind of like soft, cool, almost like gel feeling to it. Really pretty. And here is a highlighter from PYT Beauty. This is a clean beauty brand and this is their highlighter. I don't know if the shade is backstage pass or upgrade i can't remember i think it's upgrade and very pretty highlight definitely on the more subtle side but really really pretty you can see right there another chantecaille this is a baked gelé formula and this came out this past holiday season this is well they just call it face powder but this is a gorgeous highlight and then we have the givenchy in shimmery pink. I think there's two shades in this formula. It's gorgeous. It's another one of those like big gelée formulas. And the other one, which is the one I thought I would like more, the gold one, I think, is a little bit too deep for my skin tone. So I went for the pink and it's actually really pretty. Then we have some melt highlights. This is Stargazer. Gorgeous. And then this one is Morning Star really white and icy but there's like a gold undertone to it so it's actually wearable if your skin tone is a little bit warmer really beautiful and then of course we have some Becca highlights this one is champagne pop I I really love this highlighter it's gorgeous um, we have Parisian lights which was a collab with I believe a French influencer I can't remember her name and this was limited edition but it's really pretty and then Royal Glow, I believe this was for Harry and Meghan's wedding. Stunning, and it has that crown imprint, which is really pretty. And then we have the Endless Bronze and Glow. This came out after the Chrissy Teigen collab, or maybe the second time she collabed with them. And I believe these are the same shades that are like in her bigger palette, something like that. My memory is a little fuzzy on it, but very very pretty like blush right here pretty pretty um, highlight here this bronzer is a little bit too deep for me but i can use those two products and then one of my all-time favorite highlights this is uh, a limited edition gucci that's long been discontinued it's in sunstone and it's their illuminating powder this is such a gorgeous highlight and that powder is really really creamy and look at that look at that highlight oh like so sad that this is not in production and then we have the Estee Lauder bronze goddess heat wave highlight this is another big gelée this one admittedly is a little bit too deep for my skin tone but I just love it I just think it's so so pretty but I just love it especially in the summertime when I do get a little bit of bronziness if I use it you know with like a light hand I kind of dust it over my blush and bronze area and it works pretty nicely. And then, I, gosh, I have a bunch of these Fenty ones I totally forgot about. This is Trophy Wife, that super gold highlight. <laughs> Almost unwearable, but it's just, it's just such a cool product. I have to keep it. And then I have this duo in Sandcastle and Mint Mojito, or Minted Mojito? Minted Mojito. So another like, it's so, so beautiful. I would use them as eyeshadows. I just haven't really. Um, another kilowatt duo. This is the Mean Money Hustla Baby duo. Really pretty. 
And then we have The Girl Next Door and Chic Freak, which is a bit pinkier than the Mean Money one. All right, this drawer definitely needs to be clean. There's a lot of like white dust grime on there. So I'm gonna do that. I've got my Novus Plastic Clean and Shine. So I'm gonna do that and put everything back. All right, all cleaned up and ready to move to highlighter drawer number two. All right, highlighter drawer number two, sort of in the same state of disarray, but anyway, let's just keep going. So I've got the new Chanel Le Beige Healthy Glow Illuminating Powder in Sand. I've talked about this one quite a bit, so I'll just show that to you. And let me move this out of the way. These are all of my Chanel highlighters. So this one is the Illuminating Powder. This one came out with that Desert. I can't remember the full name. Warm Desert? Something like that. <laughs> that collection. It came out for spring, basically. Gorgeous. I love this powder. It's very, very soft. You have to use a very like gentle hand with this. And it's great as like a light dusting finishing powder. I love it. It's beautiful. And then here is the Duo De Camellias. This was limited edition. And look at how beautiful that is. It's a split pan and it's just super shimmery, super cool toned, gorgeous. There's the Duo De Camellias swatched. Here is the Illuminating Powder in Metal Peach. Another beautiful one. Here is the, um, oh, the Line Highlighter in Or Rose. Gorgeous, these are like big gelée ones. Really beautiful. And here is the Or Blanc version. And then here is their highlighting powder in Rosy Gold. This is part of their regular line. These are not my favorite Chanel highlighters. They're okay, but not my favorite. Another one from their regular line, this is Ivory Gold. And then this one is White Opal. This is the one with the little iridescence in there, very pretty. And then we have the Plissé Lumiere highlighter. One of my favorites. It is so gorgeous. And then another line highlighter. This one came out after the other two and it's a little bit deeper, but same formula. Just absolutely gorgeous. And then here is the Camellia de Chanel. Love this one too. I try not to use this one too much because I don't want to get rid of the flower embossing, but it's so, so pretty. So I think those are all of my Chanel highlighters. I also have this Melt Cosmetics one. I should probably stick it in the other drawer with the other, so maybe I'll have to rearrange a bit. But this is the one that came out with the Muerte, what was it, Muerte Diaz? Muerte Diaz collection? Sorry, I can't remember, but I kept all this packaging because it's so pretty. It has one of those candy skulls on there, which I love. This is a great like duochrome highlighter. And then I have some of the Clé de Peau Luminizing Face Enhancers. This one is number 16. This one, number 15, is very, very pretty. It has like a little bit of warmth to it. Makes for a great, like very light blush or like a blush topper. This one's gorgeous. And then this one, number 18, is my favorite shade because it has the most uh, reflectiveness, the most like kind of like metallic quality. Otherwise, the other Clay de Peau powders are very, very subtle. They highlight in a very just kind of like brightening kind of way. They don't have a lot of sheen to them, but that one is is a nice one. And then here is probably one of my very first highlighters. This is the Laura Mercier Matte Radiance Baked Powder in number one highlight. This is a gorgeous one. Then, of course, the Charlotte Tilbury Bar of Gold. This is such a fun highlight. I just love this like packaging that I came in. It's like a little paper box, so it's a little bit cheesy, but it's it's a lot of fun. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. And then one of my prized possessions, this was the Modern Mercury highlighter when Victoria Beckham collabed with Estee Lauder for the first time. Loved it. Big gelée, really interesting 
tone. It's like this cool mauve kind of highlight. Very, very unique and very, very pretty. Then I have the loose highlight um, from Inglot. This was the Jennifer Lopez collaboration and you can get a sense of the shade there. It's very golden, very sparkly, very J-Lo. It's very pretty. And then one of my favorite highlighting palettes from Hourglass. This is the one that was just recently re-released. This is the Ambient Metallic Strobe Lighting Palette. Gorgeous. I just love all the shades in here. The Charlotte Tilbury Bar of Gold Palette. This is the one that had the three shades in there. This is the NARS Bonk de Sable Highlighting Palette. This it needs to be part of their permanent line. I don't know why this was limited edition. And when NARS kind of says goodbye to something, they really say goodbye to something. And I really wish they would bring this back. This is one of the best highlighting palettes ever, ever. Absolutely stunning. The Pat McGrath Highlighting Trio. Three baked highlighters in there. A lot of fun. And here is another MAC Robert Lee Morris collab. And I think they called this a blush as well. Yeah, powder blush in peach, but this is really just a beautiful highlight. And then I have this incredibly old, I, I just can't get rid of it, I don't know why, but this is the Rouge Bunny Rouge highlighting powder in number 66, Goddess. It's more like a, like a true sense of highlight, like it's just a light kind of powder. It doesn't have that much reflectiveness to it. It's very, very subtle. I don't really have anything like this in my collection. That's probably why I've held on to it. And then here are some of my Guerlain highlights. So this is the Terracotta Summer Glow, I believe from last year. Very golden. This is the Illuminating Powder from their Golden Land collection. This was a holiday collection. This is their Gold Bronzing Powder from their Gold Light collection. And then this is their Copper Bronzing Powder from their Electric Light collection. And this one is like the lightest of all the rest. And then I have this Giorgio Armani Lunar New Year highlighter. This was kind of a letdown. <laughs> it's not a great powder at all, but I love the dog embossing in there and I love this packaging, so I held on to it, but not a great product. All right, that is it for drawer number two. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean up this drawer. It has a lot of like white dusty particles on there. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna dust it off, spray my Novus on there and make it nice and shiny and new. Oh, I forgot these Fenty ones. Okay, I'm gonna put them in here, hopefully they'll fit. But I was wondering why that other drawer seemed to have a little bit more room than I thought it would. All right, <laughs> drawer number two down. Let's go ahead and get drawer number three. All right, here is drawer number three, and I could really use some reorganizing because I'm seeing like a lot of Laura Mercier in here, and I had Laura Mercier in the other drawer, and oh my gosh, whatever. Okay, <laughs> let's just jump right in. I've got a Nabla. Skin Glazing Glass Skin Finish Glow Powder. This is in Amnesia. And this is one of those gorgeous baked gelée highlights. I freaking love these. I want to get the shade one like lighter than this. And I think Ulta had a sale on these and I completely missed it. Anyway, these are gorgeous. The Anastasia Amorizi Highlight. I mean, stunning. Don't know why this was limited edition. They just need to bring that back. I have a bunch of those NARS highlights. This one is Albatross, Capri, and Fort de France. This one was my favorite. And then I have a NARS Hot Sand highlight. This is such a beautiful highlight also. And this is the YSL Touchiclat Lumiere Divine. This was a very, very pretty subtle, subtle highlight. And then here is the By Terry Starlight Rose CC Powder. This is gorgeous. 
And then here is one of those prized possession makeup products. So this was a Chantecai uh, limited edition collaboration with De Gournay. They are like a wallpaper company. And look at how beautiful this is. I refuse to use it anymore. I kind of swatched it over here, but I don't want to get rid of the embossing. It is absolutely gorgeous. And then here is the Chantecai Les Paillettes highlight. So that De Gournay um, highlight was is like basically the same as this bottom part of this highlight. And this unfortunately is limited edition also. Then I've got some Laura Mercier face illuminators. This one is Devotion. This one is Addiction. This one is Indiscretion. I have two Indiscretions. Oh, I'm so bummed. I don't think I realized that and I swatched both of them. And then this was their um, limited edition spring collection one. This one was Affection. This is one that has the flower embossing on it. This one is gorgeous. And then I've got Estila Heaven's Hue Highlighter in Luminescence. These are the ones that are kind of like putty texture. I never really like use this one, but it's such an interesting formula. Yeah, it just feels like really cool to the touch. Oops, I just completely smushed it. Here is that Guerlain Duo, really cool toned, baked gelée, gorgeous. And then here is the RMS Luminizing Powder in Grand Dame, beautiful. And then we have my other Burberry highlighter. I don't, I don't know why they're separated, uh, but this one is in Nude Gold number two. Here's the Natasha Denona Glow Gold Duo was not a fan of this. They both were just too glittery, basically. Uh, but huge fan of these Natasha Denona Super Glows. So this is one fair, two light medium, which is probably the one I wear more often. And this one is three bronze, which surprisingly, I really, really love. And then I actually have some like OG Pat McGrath um, highlighters. Before she came out with her whole line, she sold those like limited edition kits. And this was part of her 003 kit. So this is iridescent pink. This is fine gold. And now you can find these in that highlighter trio palette that she has. These are the first two colors in that trio. But I've held on to these just for sentimental reasons. I really liked her kits. I mean, I love her line and I love Pat McGrath. But her kits were like so special. I, I really enjoyed them. Let's see. I've got this Laura Geller Baked Gelato Swirl and Gilded Honey. This used to be like the bomb. Everyone had to have this. But it is a little bit deep for me, I have to say. And then I also have the Peach Glow version. This one's very pretty. More like a blush topper. And then I have this MAC Soft and Gentle mineralized skin finish. This was one of those products I felt like I needed to have, but I don't wear very often. It is quite like micro glittery too. And then here is the MAC Whispers of Guilt Extra Dimension Skin Finish. This is just like the Laura Geller. It's, it has like such a similar tone and it's just a little bit too deep for my skin tone, but it is really, really pretty. And then I have this Wet n Wild, <laughs> one of the few drugstore products I have in my collection. This is the highlighting powder in Golden Flower Crown. And everyone just, you know, raved about this. And I thought, oh, I gotta try it. And I have to say, it is really quite lovely. There, I don't know if you can see it, but there it is. So that's the Wet n Wild. And then, let's see, I have this, oh, Vanilla Quartz from Becca. This is probably one of my favorite highlights from Becca. And I don't know why I have it in a smaller pan. Not like I've ever panned a highlighter, but this is such a beautiful one. And then I have this Jouer powder highlighter in Skinny Dip. This is another one, really gorgeous. A hint, a hint too deep for my skin tone. Maybe now that I'm self tanning, <laughs> this and those other ones could work. But the last time I checked, these were too deep. Oh, this Rodin highlighter, this came out with their um, Mermaid collection. So this is their luxury illuminating powder in the shade Siren. And I love this. It's baked gelée. It has this like peachy uh, tone to it, but then there's like this duochrome, um, like cool iridescence to it. It kind of like shifts to like a pinky purple. It's so pretty, and I don't know why this was limited edition. It just needs to be part of their line. They just need to come out with a whole 
like highlighting line because the formula is really really great color really great so anyway love that oh here's a persona um cali glow highlighter in zuma this one is gorgeous there's the persona i don't i don't know why but i have this empty cure weiss case sitting in here i think because let's see oh i did have a highlighter in here but i put it into like the bigger cure weiss um palette that i have so i have this empty one extra one sitting there i have a bunch of Oh, for highlights. This one is Glow Goals. This one is Rodeo Drive, which I think is my favorite. Has like a little peachiness to it. Here is Beverly Hills. And here is Blissful. The Ofra highlighters are just, I, I think, hands down, the brightest, most metallic highlighters I have in my collection. And then I have this um, I Love Sarah E um, collab with Dose of Colors. This is the highlight in Bathe. And it is like definitely too deep for my skin tone, but it definitely swatches like almost like the Estee Lauder Modern Mercury. It's the only highlight I have that has like a mauve tint to it, this and the Modern Mercury. So I don't know, I've just held on to it because I just, it's so interesting. And I feel like it makes a nice blush topper if you're trying to do something like cool toned. It's really, really cool. All right, that is it for my highlighters. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna wipe down this drawer because it is like pretty filthy and put all the highlighters back. All right, drawer number three. This is that extra Laura Mercier indiscretion that I'm just gonna leave on top here and um, either donate or give to a friend if they want. So that is it for this collection video. I hope this wasn't too long, um, but we just did blushes and highlights and I will be back next time. I'm looking at my collection drawers. I think I'll be back next time to do single shadows. I think I actually have enough for an entire video. So thank you so much for tuning in. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe down below if you haven't already, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!